Good morning, Jags. This is Fahad. Today is December 10th. Let's get started. Um, Nextera Energy, symbol NEE. -E. Only one stock I have for you to discuss today. So let's dive in. First of all, purely from a technical standpoint, um, this chart is setting up for a rally off the trend support. This is a very crystal clear, very nice looking chart. It goes in a channel, it makes constantly higher highs and higher lows, and recently it has pulled back on light volume back to the trend support. If it starts to uh, take a new leg higher from this level at $73 per share, this potentially opens the door all the way to about $82 to $83 per share. And that's simply based off how this channel has been playing out over the course of last nine months or so. So here is the upper end of the channel resistance, okay? So that's Nextera Energy NEE. -E. Yesterday, there was unusual call buying that picked up in this stock towards the end of the day. So first they came for the March 75 call options right over here. Over 3,000 of these contracts were bought to open for up to uh, $3.70 offer side. The open interest yesterday was 1,800. This morning, the open interest has gone up to 4,800. So all three of those trade uh, contracts that were bought yesterday, about a million dollars in bullish bet in the March 75 calls is now positioned in the open interest. Also yesterday, they went out longer term to January 22 months, and they were buying both of these January 22, 75, as well as 77.5 strike calls. They bought 3,400 contracts of the 75 strike calls, paying up to $8 offer. And then they also bought the 77.5 strike calls, and they paid for that, um, up to $7.30. So put those two together, a couple million dollars worth of bullish bet was open in that month as well. So pretty healthy amount of bullish option activity in this stock. Yesterday overall traded 2.3 times daily average call volume. Now, with all of this said, let's take a look at it from the fundamental standpoint. Back in June, this news came out. This was reported by the Institute of Energy Economics and Financial Analysis, or IEEFA. This was on June 4th. And they, and they talked about that uh, there is a plan in place in Los Angeles in which there's a very old intermountain coal plant that currently generates 1,800 megawatt of power will be converted into a hydrogen facility. Uh, the Intermountain Power Agency, owner of 1,800 megawatt coal-fired Intermountain Power Plant in Delta, Utah. Actually, it's in Delta, Utah. I'm sorry, I said Los Angeles. There's a separate one that's going on in, in Los Angeles, which is a different one. Has picked Black and Veatch Corporation as a chief engineering company to oversee the facility's conversion into a hydrogen facility. Who's going to be running this facility? That company is Nextera Energy. Then fast forward to the next month on July 24th, and then this news came out. And this one was Nextera Energies to build its first green hydrogen plant in Florida. This is a very large one. Okay, this is a very large undertaking. Largest U.S. renewable generator really excited about green energy reveals plans for $65 million pilot plant for Florida Power and Light, FPNL. Anybody who lives in Florida is very familiar with Florida Power and Light. It's, big, it's the biggest utility company that's out there. Through the Florida Power and Light utility, next door, I will propose a $65 million program for 20 megawatt electrolyzer to produce 100% green hydrogen from solar power. And this project is going to be coming online in 2023. 100% created by next era energy so that's two deals right not so much of a big deal but then um interestingly the earnings report came out right over here on the october 21st and the company reveals something very very interesting here's a direct comment that comes from the ceo and they say that as we have previously discussed we are optimistic about the potential for green hydrogen to support an emission-free future consistent with their toe in the water approach to Consistent with our toe-in-the-water approach to new opportunities, renewable resources has developed in pipeline of approximately 50 potential green hydrogen projects spanning in power, transportation, and industrial sector. So we learn about this one project in, uh, in Utah, in 
June, the second one in, in Florida in July. And then in October, companies said in the earnings call that they're actually working on 50 potential green hydrogen projects, expanding in all kinds of transportation. Fast forward again, yesterday there was a meeting that took place, a conference that took place. This was an ESG conference. And um, in this conference, the next era CEO and the CFO presented and here's a comment that catches my attention. Uh, this is summarized by BMO Capital in its research report. And they go on to say, promising hydrogen future with 65% of the generation powered by natural gas, Florida provides me a fertile environment to develop commercial hydrogen related decarbonizing solutions. And right here, this is the key. Ni is developing over 40 to 50 hydrogen related pilots, which it believes will convert into a handful of commercial agreements over the course of 2021. So here's the point, what I'm trying to explain. Up until June of this year, nobody even know, nobody could even tell that this company was actually working on make, you know, all of these hydrogen projects. Then all of a sudden news one by one started to come out. One came out in Utah in June. One came out in Florida in July. There's another project similarly that's happening in LA as well. I don't have the news clip for that. But then in the company, in the earnings call in October, company said, oh, actually, they're working on 50 pilot programs. And then they confirmed that yesterday in this conference call as well. And they put a timeline on it that they believe that this will turn into a handful of commercial agreements over the course of 2021. This is all happening at a very rapid pace. So I do not believe this is all baked into the consensus view. And as a result, I believe this stock could potentially be a big winner with the continuous, uh, continued flows into the ESG theme that we are talking about. And so for 2021, one to watch. And perhaps that's why after this conference call that took place yesterday, somebody took a notice and they bought a million dollars worth of these March 75 calls and another two plus million dollars worth of these January 2022, 75 and 77.5 strike calls. Purely technically speaking, as I said, um, this thing in short term could make a move, gradual move all the way up to about $82 per share going from the lower end of the channel to the higher end of the channel. And that's it from me, Jay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, so two stocks on my list today. Uh, first one is Zimmer Biomet, ticker ZBH. Uh, this is actually going to be a homepage article that I'll publish uh, sometime later today. Uh, and it's certainly longer term in nature. Uh, but on their last earnings call, management highlighted one of their goals being uh, to launch an intelligent persona total knee implant that incorporates smart sensor technology. Uh, there was an update yesterday from Needham, uh, which provided more details on that. Uh, so like I said, I will have a homepage article later today. Perfect. Looking forward to that article. This company has made so much progress in its total knee procedures, taking gradually to, um, uh, market share away from the prior leader striker that had the first uh, mover advantage. So uh, like to see how this company is making further progress in that area. Yep. And then the second stock is Kiwi. Uh, ticker is QIWI. <clears throat> this is a Russian payment and financial services company. Uh, okay. uh, yesterday, they filed a 6K, and uh, if you if you go to read that, you will find that uh, from July to December, uh, the Central Bank of Russia performed an audit uh, of Kiwi Bank that spanned from July 2018 to September 2020. And you know, during this audit, they identified certain violations and deficiencies uh, relating to the reporting and record keeping requirements from the bank. Um, they imposed a fine on the company, uh, 11 million Russian rubles. But in addition to this, the Central Bank of Russia also introduced restrictions with respect to Kiwi Bank's operations, including, and this went into effect December 7th, the suspension or limitation of most types of payments to foreign merchants and money transfers to prepaid cards from corporate accounts. So now let's jump to the JP Morgan downgrade note where they ask which segments are going to be impacted from this. Uh, the analyst at JP Morgan says 
uh, Kiwi operations that will face suspension are related to a portion of payments within the e-commerce and money remittance divisions, which are predominantly related to sports betting and online gaming. Roughly 33 to 40% of payment revenue and 20 to 25% of total payment volumes will be cut as a result of this uh, Bank of Russia suspension. Um, the restriction, as I said, it was introduced on December 7th, so Kiwi will be cutting the suspended operations over the next 10 days, meaning that 2020 operations are like unlikely to be impacted, but they, JP Morgan expects a permanent cut to volumes and revenues to be visible in 2021 estimates. Wow. Uh, you know, uh, so something like this happens, this basically is telling me that this thing is going to head back to new 52-week low over time. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they're coming down on the regulatory side. Looks like there's going to be, from what you're telling me, looks like there's going to be permanent loss of business in, in some of its core areas in 2021. Yeah, and then unless, you know, as of right now, the company needs to try and find a way to mitigate these cuts uh, but we don't yeah. know what that is yet yeah so the size shrinks um enterprise value shrinks and the stock heads back to at a minimum from a pure technical standpoint 12 dollar would be the first target on the downside mm -hmm. it closed at 13.59 yesterday so on a percentage basis that's another about 11 12 percent to the downside to get to this 12 level but then it may actually crack through that too and then head all the way down to 10 bucks, maybe single digits over time in 2021, perhaps. So mm -hmm. interesting update. Not, you know, never really look at this stocks, although it yeah. does appear sometimes on my option scanners. Chronicle. Good morning. Um, I have the latest key bank channel checks and their forecast regarding what hyperscale demand will look like in 2021. So. In their note, uh, analysts Weston Twig and John Quint, John Kim um, have done some checks and they found that hyperscale server CapEx budgets have grown from around 28% this year and they're likely to be up 25% next year. And this leads them to believe that server demand growth will come in between 5% to 15% in 2021. And although, although uh, demand remains soft in the near term due to enterprise softness and uh, just overall digestion. Uh, they do expect the demand recovery to begin in Q1. In addition to these high level checks, there are a couple companies that stood out in this note. First off, if we look at the graph here on the bottom right, we can see from KeyBank's tracker that AMD has been quickly gaining share in public cloud over the past year. Um, this, this is nothing new. We've been pointing this out for ages now, but the other um, component, component that may come as a surprise is that AMD's server share has also been gaining and currently stands at around 7% versus just under 5% in mid-year, um, according to Mercury Research. And as a result, uh, KeyBank is expecting AMD's overall server share to reach 10% by early 2021. And then apart from AMD, this note also makes a mention that server DRAM inventory is beginning to drop from elevated levels um, and it will likely reach normal three to four week levels by the end of Q1. So obviously this is also a positive read for Micron, which is a stock that a lot of Jaguar clients are in. So just wanted to point, it out, um, point out that this is one of the reasons why the stock has been on a tear recently. So not exactly setups or trade ideas, but just some running commentaries on Names that were already bullish on. Yeah, and this is a very important for AMD. And by the way, yesterday when the stock was down uh, to eighty-nine dollars per share, it has now slightly dipped below ninety. I was still seeing call buying in AMD all the way to a hundred strike. They were buying January hundred or one hundred and one strike. So the flows continue to be very very strong on any kind of pullback in AMD. We have been bullish on this name, like for the last, you know. 60 70 percent i mean when the stock was trading at 30 40 bucks basically since since then we have been bullish on amd here we are trading at 90 now but this is important if they're making these kind of um, uh, uh, penetration gains market share gains in in the server business it's encroaching a into into a, 
uh, in, 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 into a level where basically it will start to significantly disrupt. There was a, an article I also read that this could potentially start to disrupt in some ways even NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA is the absolute leader when it comes to cloud capex, benefiting with the GPUs and everything. And and but what was what has happened is that the re, the real reason why Nvidia has been so famous and so popular is because it's the the GPUs created the low latency channel for for the capex to tap into that instead of actually getting a high latency even though more powerful microprocessor chip. So people a lot of the a lot of the hyperscalers have started to you know use Nvidia over Intel. But AMD is coming up with Risen for the enterprise, which is a microprocessor that potentially provides still the similar kind of load latency as a GPU would do. So maybe it will start to take market share even from NVIDIA. And then you've got the gaming division, which is even better, which is so stronger. Then you've got the consumer, consumer products that are coming out where all of these are getting powered by AMD as well. So there's... There's a lot and a lot of spaces where AMD is going, and I think the future for this company still looks so bright, uh, so strong, well into 2021 and even into 2022. Several years are going to continue to remain very strong for AMD. Good stuff, though. These charts helped. It, it, it forms the pictures together in the mind and stuff. So thanks, Chronicle. Um, all right, folks, uh, short and sweet today. We'll see you in the chat room shortly.